teacher talk session tonight tonight we are going to have another educator from different part of the world as you know that tonight our 153rd session we uh, are having it and tonight uh, we are having a teacher teacher and a teacher trainer from Argentina Graciela Maria Martinez uh, when she comes we are going to start our live session with her uh, we are going to have a uh, fruitful session with her i'm sure it's going to be very educational her <coughs> takes time to join I'm waiting for her to come. I have accepted her invitation. <laughs> Not yet. It takes time. Some Sometimes because of the Instagram, just a moment. <coughs> Sorry about it. We need to wait. Yes. Okay. Oh, there she there. Is. <laughs> ah, wonderful. It's great to see you, Graciela. Oh, great to see you. I was no. I was panicking because no, it was no, no, taking don't so worry. long. It was taking don't so worry. long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it's about I think about Instagram. There is a kind of a problem about this live session connection, but anyways, we figure it out. Uh, okay, uh -huh. so I would like to say thank you very much for accepting my invitation, Graciela, and being my guest for tonight, 453rd session. It's a great honor to have you tonight. In <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> 400 and how many? 400 four, and? No, 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 ah, 153. Oh I, oh, I was shocked. No, it's not yet. Not, had, well, not, we are not there that's... yet. <laughs> but that's still a big, big number, a big figure. Well, I'm, I'm really happy and thank you, uh, Volkan, for this invitation. I'm so thrilled to meet uh, teachers from, uh, well, other places all over the world, right? Your <laughs> own, uh, your own um, teachers there, perhaps colleagues, right? And yeah, some friends yeah. I, I, I can see here also from yeah, my area. You can. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. There are some teachers from your area. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. So we are all busy, and you are also busy. Right. So if you're ready, we can start. Uh, all right. I'm free for you today, <laughs> right? This Wonderful. Ti this time is for you. Right. Let's start. Wonderful. Okay. So I know about you, uh, Graciela, and but maybe our audiences would like to know about you. So can you tell us about yourself, please, all and right. a bit about your experiences too? All right. Well, where to start? Such a long time as a teacher. I'm a teacher of English. 
English is a foreign language in my country, so I'm a teacher of English as a foreign language, uh, which means uh, we don't need English every day uh, for our everyday life. So English is taught at schools, it's, uh, it's compulsory in primary, secondary schools, right? But uh, it's not a second language. So I'm a teacher of English, I'm also a teacher trainer, and um, and I run a, an Instagram account called, we're going to talk about yeah. that later, Teachers sure. in Action, right? Uh, so I'm quite a busy person and enjoying what I do all the time. That's, that's probably uh, the first thing I need to do, enjoy what I do, right? I yeah. started, I, I came into contact with English when I was... Um, 12, 13 years old, then I studied English during my secondary school and when I finished I decided to uh, start teachers training college which here is almost, uh, uh, I mean it's parallel to a university career, uh -huh. it's four years. Uh, but um, this is interesting I would say. Uh, when I was about to finish I got married oh. and for some reason I said, I, I was about to enroll for my last year, and I said, what am I doing here? And now I don't want to finish this, I want to raise a family. <laughs> and so I wrapped up my, my dream and put it in a little box and, uh, wow. and started my family. When my first son was, uh, my eldest son was finishing his secondary school and started university I said okay this is time to resume and that was a wow I imagine he was uh, 18 and um, I started again and I did my Wonderful. career again because what I had already done was not valid all that time I, I went and teaching and learning and teaching myself but actually formally I did my career twice <laughs> <laughs> it's great, Almost. thank you, yeah. wonderful, thank you for sharing, yeah. sharing Graciela. Yeah. And so my next question is about again your past, about uh -huh. your own education. Uh -huh. So what was or were your turning point or points in your own education? Actually, you just mentioned a little bit about you said yeah. I stopped the school, yeah. my career and I, yeah. you know, yeah. got married yeah. or something like this. Okay. What is yeah, it? that yeah, I don't know. I can. I well, it was a turning point because I actually changed uh, completely, changed my my path completely there, right? Uh, but I continued as a teacher, as I said. But I did lots of uh, um, let's say self discovery, self teaching all along those times, and. Uh, so that might be a turning point obviously when I started studying again that was another one but I think um, one that, that, that changed or, or that has fulfilled me um, uh -huh. as, as a teacher is when I became a teacher trainer uh, that that is um, uh, that that has been really meaningful and it is still meaningful to me because being a teacher trainer means that you can pass on your experience uh, to others, right? And you can yeah. share and you can also nurture from uh, the new generations, right? So yeah, exactly. your vision yeah. of mm -hmm. the world, your vision as a teacher sort of uh, gets richer when you, when you are in contact with, with other, with, with new teachers that have all this, energy right and you have the experience so this is a good combination well exactly exactly i totally agree thank you thank you very much for sharing them with us graciela by the way am i pronouncing correctly is it graciela Perf perfectly well, perfectly okay, great so i know you have been teaching for a long time and yeah. in, in this in, in your career you have tried different probably different methodologies, different techniques and, yeah. you know, strategies in your lessons. And probably yeah. you have a philosophy, philosophy of teaching. So yeah. what is it? What is your philosophy of teaching? Right. Well, you're, you're, you're totally right, uh, Volkan. When I started or when I learned my English, that was the time. <laughs> let's, let's keep it here, right? Sure. That sure. was 
audiolingualism. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> then communicative language teaching and then all that. Imagine, uh, that's my, that, that's a, let's say my, my Your experience. picture, right? <laughs> my experience. Teacher. But I have always tried, my philosophy of life is definitely um, out of life, of, of, and of, also of life. That's why I, it's not a mistake, I think. It's, um, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I believe in um, a student-centered uh, classroom, but not only student-centered, <sighs> I believe in humanized education, right, where the student is taken into account as a person, right? Mind, mind, body and spirit or soul, call it what you will, right? Mm -hmm. But the whole nature of the person, the whole nature of a, of, of a learner. Um, I believe that if you cannot establish a bond with your learners, uh, it, it will be more difficult to get good results. So first thing is establish a bond, create an atmosphere of uh, um, a comfortable atmosphere where they may feel confident, where they don't feel that you're constantly checking upon them, where there is room for them to share what they think, even to disagree with you as a teacher, and uh, to create sometimes their own uh, opportunity opportunities or their own spaces for learning, right? I, I admire um, Stephen Krashen, right? Wow. This question of, mm -hmm. yeah, this question of meaningful learning in a supportive atmosphere. And, uh, and that for me is uh, paramount, right? Th that's what I try to get in my in my lessons, uh, I hope I'm successful, right? <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much, Graciela, for sharing with us. Okay, now we, have, we are educators, and you are an educator yeah. or trainer. Yeah. And in, in, this, in your education life, probably you have, you know, the lots of stories, like all other teachers. Mm. And sometimes you have failed ones, sometimes you have successful ones, sometimes you have maybe mm. excited one. Yeah. So can you tell us, maybe one or two success oh. of your stories, oh, like, right. which is uh, inspiration. Yeah. But if you want, you can also tell us some failed one if you want to oh. share. <laughs> it's all your well, choice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Um, I always go for the positive, right? So sure. let's go for the positive. Okay. Um, well, personally, uh, something that has... Um, has left a, a deep mark, uh, is uh, a deep impression, is when uh, taking a course in the UK, I met um, a colleague, a Ukrainian teacher. Uh, we, that was 2018. And well, we sort of became acquainted and then we kept on writing and, and in touch with each other. And then during the pandemic and when the war started in, started in Ukraine, we became closer and closer in spite of the distance. And I've learned so much from her, so much because of her, of her and her students' resilience, her colleagues' resilience uh, in, in um, Keeping on, uh, mm -hmm. keeping on working, trying their best in, in very hard times. So that's I for see. me uh, a very inspiring um, situation or story that I can share with you. Well, and uh, yeah, and uh, from a student here, it was a short, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks <laughs> ago, a former student of mine, uh, a teacher now. Uh, said, uh, I remember once you said, and when they tell me once you said, I sort of freeze <laughs> because I don't know what they are going to come up with. But she said, and I'm going to mention her, she's called Lorena. I don't know if she's here. I Hello. haven't seen her, Hello. but uh, yeah, <laughs> she will probably watch this later. And she said, I remember when you once told us about the Pygmalion effect. I don't know if uh, our audience oh. uh, is um, acquainted with that, but the Pygmalion effect is when 
uh, the teacher um, has high expectations for their students. And so if the teacher believes that their students can do more and better, it's certain that their students will do more and better, right? On the contrary, if the teacher underestimates students and students' possibilities, right, students will probably be not be that successful. And uh, that made me think that, that I, I mentioned that a long time. This person who had been my student a long time ago, was my student a long time ago. And um, I said, wow, she still remembers this. So that made me wonder about a teacher's influence I in see. time, right? right? What we can say, <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Graciela, for sharing it with them, with us, that story. Mm -hmm. is. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. So and for you as a trainer, we are yeah. teachers as language teachers mm -hmm. or generally teachers. What are the most important qualities and skills mm -hmm. a successful mm -hmm. English language teachers mm -hmm. or generally teachers should possess? What are your mm -hmm. ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there are so many, but if I have to choose, well, first you need to be academically proficient in what you want to teach, mm. right? You you cannot yeah, sure. you cannot uh, cheat on your students. You need to to know what you're going to teach, right? Know about, and you need to go deeply into it. I always tell my my uh, trainee teachers that uh, they need to know <laughs> much more than what they are going to teach. Other than that, which is the academic uh, part of the of the situation, I would say that one needs to be flexible, uh, adaptable. Imagine in these changing times, if we are not adaptable, we we will become we will disappear. Uh, but um, open-minded, open-minded. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, generous in the sense of uh, accepting other people's contributions and those other people may be your own students perhaps you didn't think of something and uh -huh. a student comes up with something really interesting <laughs> which makes which makes you rethink your your plans or your class and say, oh look at that uh, <laughs> and give that person the opportunity for uh, for some tough some moments during the class to uh -huh. probably become a kind of teacher there because that one has come up with something interesting so uh, being flexible open-minded and if you can be anything I would say and this is for teaching and for life this is part of my philosophy in life if you can mm -hmm. be anything be kind yeah, because you important. don't know you 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 don't know what the other the other one in front of you is bringing to the classroom, what yeah. that person what what situation that person is living at the moment, at home or uh, I don't know uh, personally uh, if if that person is having a hard day, a hard time, uh, a hard economic exactly. situation, so perhaps a, a kind word, a smile. You will always see me smiling. It's my nature. Uh, a, a smile may change that person's um, day, right? And, I see. And you know that there are some neurons which are called mirror. I think uh -huh. so. If you smile. <laughs> The other one uh, smile. will exactly. necessarily smile. <laughs> so that's an exercise we can try. Yeah. Yes. Uh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Graciela. Okay. So probably so far, you as a trainer, you have tr you have done lots of training sessions, workshops, uh, and yeah. I don't know maybe online sessions. We have done yeah. it or face to face sessions. We have done it. Okay. When you think when you think about them, uh -huh. what was or were the most interesting situation or situation that you faced. And another thing that I would like to ask, have you ever met a teacher that you cannot change his or her ideas about <laughs> the things that you have tried to taught them? 
Yeah, those yeah, there may be those that say, okay, I agree with you, but, and, and there you don't know what the but is going to be. Uh, well, yes, I've, um, I've delivered um, presentations um, internationally and nationally, of course, and my classes. Um, as I was saying uh, before, one of the most interesting ones was to teach us in Ukraine. Uh -huh. uh, it was the University of uh, Cherkasy. Um, and it was during, our, they, they do have a week uh, for all uh, teachers to join different sessions. And I was invited to deliver a talk on, uh, on how all the macro skills are influenced by uh, pronunciation or how rather how pronunciation influences all other skills um, and there were quite a number of um, well-trained teachers and it was very interesting because after my presentation there was um, the, there were great contributions uh, and though we we do not share the same mother tongue, we could find uh, quite a number of, uh, of uh, things in common, uh, though they were a bit reluctant to accept some of my suggestions, probably because, uh, <laughs> not, not because they didn't like them, but they didn't find them suitable for their own, uh, their own context. This is something we need to take into account, not all contexts. Are the mm -hmm. same. Uh, I always I tell see. my trainee teachers first thing, right? Look at the territory, right? The map is not the territory. You may have an idea in mind as when you take Google Maps, but then you go directly <laughs> there and you find a different reality. So the map is not the territory. Think of the context and adapt. That's why I was speaking about adaptability. Adapt your 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 class, your presentation, whatever, your activities, to that context. I do see. Not, mm -hmm. Do not take something fixed and imagine that that is going to work automatically just because you chose it. It's, oh, it's a coming mm -hmm. and going, you know, so you need to mm -hmm. be. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Graciela, you're a trainer. And you uh -huh. always try to help the teachers yeah. when they ask, how do you do that? How do you help teachers as a trainer? Okay. What, do, okay. what, do, what do they expect to get from you? And how do they reach you? What should they do to reach you? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I've got, uh, I've got my... Uh, I'm... Um, a uh, tenured teacher. I mean, I have my senior. Uh, oh, what do you call it? Seniority in some subjects at my teachers training at the teachers uh -huh. training college where I work. Uh, actually, I'm in charge of uh, uh, subjects which are called uh, the fundamentals of um, English language teaching and oh, learning. That's on the one hand, and on the other hand, I have uh, discourse oral discourse practices, which wow. is a, a combination of phonetics yes. and uh, uh, oral and, I mean, listening and speaking skills. So there I've got my trainee teachers uh, uh, regularly. But I also have, um, well, my, my uh, private, um, let's say, context in Teachers in Action. And teachers, some teachers come uh, after years of having graduated because they need to refresh what they have learned <laughs> or Definitely. they yeah they feel that because they've been teaching uh, low levels they are sort of they need a brush up their English need, needs to be brushed up needs to be polished so they come we have groups of teachers to get in together improving their English right and I think that what they expect is um, a mix or a combination, I would say, of, as I said before, academic knowledge, but also this feeling of, uh, of um, understanding, right? That you listen to them, you understand them, and they <clears throat> say, well, I need this, how can you help me? So you need to understand 
what the person really needs and you yes. only get that through listening right for mm -hmm. me listening is exactly so important so important mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. listening okay. to others great thank you thank you very much all right so you know uh, in our classrooms even experienced teachers or the new teachers they face difficulties for mm. you know the creating creating a student-centered classroom environment yeah. that promotes an active language learning yeah. so to create this this environment what mm. do you suggest uh, mm. for us mm -hmm. uh, for, mm -hmm. for or for them uh -huh. Uh -huh. well first off you need as a teacher you need to have great self-confidence right mm -hmm. and you you shouldn't i would say you shouldn't be afraid of the unexpected because if if you as a teacher are in control of the class as in the old times right you are the ones doing all the talking and students just listen to you well you're in control of the class and perhaps nothing difficult happens you don't get into any difficult in, in, into troubled waters but actually if uh, you, you don't need to be afraid if you want everybody to participate you can't be afraid of the unexpected right because uh, that is what makes will make your class rich uh -huh. uh, students may come up with a question and well perhaps you can answer it but what if you can't answer it that's mm -hmm. not the end I of anything see. it's it that, that doesn't mean that you're not a good teacher so you can go and say okay well as you know i don't know that why don't we go for that answer together and nowadays there are so many resources right mm -hmm. we can all go to chat gpt we can go to google we can do this that we can ask somebody else so uh, this question of working collaboratively right uh with your students i see you, you will always be the teacher you will always plan the class and you will always sort of guide them along a certain road you want them to walk through uh -huh. to walk along but um this question of collaboration um listening to students given giving your students a voice yes uh, that's important mm -hmm. ma yeah making them feel that if they raise their hand and say miss i'd like to say something okay say it and then we see whether it's uh it's valid or not but say it right so they can have a chance to express themselves so um I, that will probably you will be doing more than teaching a language, more than teaching a class, you will be sort of helping them for life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, well, if I have a problem and I don't know how to solve it, even if I'm the teacher, I can go and ask my students for help. And uh, that, I think, creating that dynamics right where everybody respects everybody else because that is the first thing let's yes. respect one another but uh, giving ourselves um time to to say what we want to say i think that that's very important that's very interesting being going back to what i said before being flexible being adaptable and if i planned a beautiful class but it doesn't work when i started <laughs> okay let's change it why should i go on with that you're right yeah. you're right yeah. i see thank you thank you very much graciela for your suggestions thank you but, but okay so take, mm -hmm. sorry Volga, but sure, you sure, know, of course i was not like that at the beginning when i started <laughs> as a no 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 i wasn't like that when i started as a teacher because i may i may think that perhaps there's people here saying oh yeah but that's not that easy uh, i was i was not so confident and that sort of comes with, uh, with, with time, right? Exactly. One doesn't get older mm -hmm. just because uh, there must yeah, be definitely. experience that you gain. But also taking risks. Uh, you That's take a important. risk. Yeah, you take a risk, you get some benefit. You take a risk, perhaps there's no benefit, but you try it. 
So <laughs> it's a question of trying, uh, trial and error, I would say. Yeah. Exactly. Just yeah. Try and see the results. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Graciela. If I'm not wrong, Graciela, you have a you have a page, uh, teachers in oh, action. Yes. Yeah. Teachers in yeah. action. Uh, yeah. What is what is your uh -huh. what is your aim with it or website okay. or Instagram page? How did you choose it? Why did you do choose this name? Uh, <sighs> tell us about it. Please. All right. Well, Teachers in Action is uh, on Instagram, <clears throat> teachers.in.action. And I started it last year. We turned one year old uh, just last February, and uh, we celebrated it with our followers. Um, well, the idea is this, to expand right, these uh, horizons as a teacher trainer, to be able to reach other teachers, <laughs> to be able to create a kind of community with other fellow accounts, right? Because I think uh, uh, in one way or another, we are all doing the same. We are trying to uh, communicate what we know. We're trying to get others uh, learn um, about what we can offer. And uh, uh, it's, it's just a year we've been on Instagram, but uh, we already have very good friends, right? I happen to meet you here. And, um, and also, uh, I, I particularly don't tell teachers how to do something, or I don't give teachers uh, ready-made activities, but I try to reflect on different uh, things, yeah. or uh, to to bring a new uh, to bring new ideas or to if I came across something in, which is interesting to me, well, it might be interesting to those reading uh, our posts there, right? I so, mm -hmm. and well, well, we also offer courses, right, and and uh, workshops and and that kind of thing. Great. And the name Teachers in Action is because. I'm always active. <laughs> That's um, why. I, I could be retired at my age, but I'm not. I keep working because I love what I'm doing. Wonderful. And uh, so I'm a teacher in action, and I imagine that there are lots of teachers in action all around the world, and, and I wanted a name that could reflect uh -huh. my... I see. My spirit. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Graciela. All right. So, Graciela, what I want to ask, and you are very busy and you work really hard. Do you have Do you have any projects that you design, uh, are working on, or designed, or you are proud of, proud of, or any exceeded uh -huh. your expectations? Something like this. Right. Well, uh, at the moment. Well, last year I started a uh, specialization, another university, let's say, course on uh, digital uh, education. So mm. I'm on that at the moment, working on that. I'm, um, I'm working on, uh, <clears throat> on um, something for TESOL, right? TESOL Argentina is going to have their Congress soon and uh, well i'm working on something on multimodality right because this is wonderful uh, i mean education nowadays needs to be or, or can be uh, let's say can be um, enhanced in, in different ways right when i was student we only had books uh, we didn't have much uh, listening material it was it was very very limited and nowadays right there's so much that uh, learners can get hold of so i'm working on that I uh, see. We, we will soon be starting our school first term here first school term in argentina wow. here in argentina we go we go from uh, uh, april to december and so I'm working on, on my lessons, you know, um, checking and rechecking them because I'm going to have new students. And so I yeah. cannot, <laughs> yeah, I, I have the, frame, the framework and all that, but they will be different people. So I need to adapt that. Adapt them. I see. That. Thank you. Yes. I see. Thank you yes. very much. And 
what I'm gonna ask, you know, the about the next question is about the yeah. technology. You know, the technology mm. is, you know, the developing every second, maybe it improving itself. So it's yeah. not easy to follow it. It's not easy to follow it, especially the latest ones and the trends in also education. As a teacher or trainer, how do you do that? Mm. How do you stay updated with the latest developments and trends in education? Any suggestions for us? Ah, well, yeah, what, what, you, you've said something which is really important. It's impossible to keep track of all that is happening nowadays. Perhaps uh, reading other teachers, reading other accounts, right? You can say, oh, look at that, or working collaboratively, as I was saying, with others, right? Sometimes with my uh, student, with my um, trainee students, trainee teachers, uh, we have a uh, part of the class in which we say, okay, anything new that you came across uh, this week, uh -huh. this last week, and we all share and they say, oh yeah, I found, uh, I found out about this uh, AI um, account or, or tool or something. And so we share that because it's practically impossible to keep track of everything. So um getting in touch with other people linkedin is a very good source of information uh -huh. very very reliable you, it Definitely. takes the time to to find people but it's it's really interesting it's a, it's a very nice professional network there um i also take courses um uh, sometimes it's not that possible i was watching um an interview uh, that you uh, you had Tom Kiddle from yeah, Nile. Yeah, Tom Kiddle, Nile. Yeah, like, well, uh -huh. yeah, Tom was. Uh, I, I took a course with him, um, August 2022. Uh, he was my tutor. We, I took a course on assessment, uh, mm -hmm. testing, oh, wow. evaluation, and assessment. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Tom Kiddle and and uh, and. Alan, uh, yes, and, and that was fantastic, right? Taking courses, attending webinars, yes, um, taking some suggested readings, right? Uh, but sometimes there's not so much time for reading. There's not uh -huh. so much time for reading. But uh, yeah, rereading things, rereading things that one may have forgotten. Yeah, that's also interesting. <laughs> Definitely, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. You have just mentioned AI, you know, AI, you talk about artificial intelligence or chat GPT yeah. or something like this. How will this affect the future of language education? <laughs> there, are, there are positive and negative effects, but maybe just a couple sentences. Yeah, right. Yes, of course. It. Well, how will I think it is already affecting? Yeah, actually, you know, it is yeah, already. Yeah, there are yeah, lots of effects. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <clears throat> well, I, what, one of the areas that will probably be uh, affected uh, the most, I suppose, is the administ administrative area. Right, uh, we teachers may have more time for other things because there are tools that now will yeah. do quite yeah. a number of administrative things for us. But also the I mentioned right now assessment right mm -hmm. uh, assessment mm -hmm. and testing uh, we cannot we cannot get uh students assignments now i mean a written assignment you cannot set a written assignment for homework <laughs> yeah all right definitely not so we need to find uh, new ways to assess our students um we need to change uh the from the old paradigm the, into this the way new paradigm them. right well, and of course, we need to be aware of uh, what is what is good, what is not that good, fake, you know, um, also some ethical issues that will come up, right? Uh, uh, only last week uh, did I come uh, across um, um, uh, some chat GPT uh, feature that is not ready yet for, for the whole public, but you've got a picture and you can write a text and the picture will speak that that test a uh, text and wow. the mm -hmm. the movements of the the eyes and the mouth and everything is so uh, so real 
so real that you cannot tell whether it's true or not. So that will give rise to quite a number of uh, ethical, <laughs> yes, ethical mm, issues. Yes, issues. Yes, I definitely. see. Thank you. But but uh -huh. I'm glad I'm alive. At the time of artificial intelligence, I'm in love with artificial intelligence. I, yeah. I like. I, I need another life <laughs> to study that. Yeah, wonderful. But I love it. Great yes, to hear it. Yes. Great <laughs> to hear it. All right, thank you, thank you very much, Graciela. And you just, I know that you are interested in writing tests. If I'm oh, not yeah. wrong. Yeah. So for you, what is the most difficult part of writing tests for exams? All right. First off, we need to think that a test, a written test, is just a photograph of the moment. Uh, it will tell us what that student can do at that moment. And that student may be influenced by some other things, not, not feeling well, running a temperature or whatever, having arrived late. So that may be affected by uh, internal and external factors, right? Could not uh, make a good revision, whatever. Um, so, that, the difficult thing is to find, um, among everything you've taught, those items that will help you get the best picture of, uh, I mean, uh, of what you want to get. It's I not see. just a question of choosing randomly. You need to be careful what you want. First off, what's your objective? What do you want to test? Uh -huh. Right? And then you start narrowing down the scope until you find exactly those items um, that will probably bring about the best possible picture. But a written test should not be the only tool to assess a learner, right? I believe in. Uh, continuous assessment. I I love portfolios for assessment. Right, exactly. this question of students mm -hmm. collecting their own productions and seeing how they have how much progress they've been uh, they've been experiencing uh, and how they they uh -huh. they solve their own problems. So a test, a written test, is interesting. Uh, is another tool but should not be the only one should not be the mm -hmm. only one i see i see thank you thank you very much graciela okay so by the way time flies you know and just a Oof. couple questions left <laughs> i hope you know, i hope uh, so far so good <laughs> i'm great. having a great time <laughs> okay thank you we are also really thank you it's really great to listen to you and by the way, I just want to remind uh, the people who are watching us right now, if you have any questions to okay. Graciela, you can write them into the, you know, the question part so I can divert them to her. Okay. Of All right. So <clears throat> let me ask you another, another question, which is, mm -hmm. you said time flies, you know, time flies. And, you know, so how do you see yourself in oh. 10 years? Yeah, will you still be a teacher or trainer, or do you have any plans to try another job? No, not another job. Not, not, <laughs> no, no, I haven't done that before. I won't. I, I don't know. I might be a. I don't know. Um, I like to live the present. Obviously, always making plans for the future. But I, I have learned. I think I have learned to enjoy the present. But I would like to. Let me close my eyes. I said, perhaps I'm sitting in my garden, looking back in ret <laughs> retrospect and say, okay, I, I haven't done so badly. I think I did okay. Wonderful. I'd like that. Yeah, I'd like, <laughs> I'd like that idea in my mind in 10 years time. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, Graciela. Yeah. And what I'm going to ask, uh, you know, as a teachers or I don't know, trainers, we have we have probably read lots of books or mm. order you know or follow some orders mm. then mm -hmm. who is or what is the book and who is the author yeah. that uh, has influenced you as a teacher yes uh well you know right before we started <coughs> this i came across a post on instagram and uh 
about this author. Uh, I don't know if people will be able to see this. They will see it upside down. But this is Ken Robinson. Ken, Ken of course. And today, I I, and I have just learned that today it would have been his 74th birthday. Wow. So, uh, I think Happy birthday this is, to him. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> Ken, that, uh, this Sir is, Ken Robinson. This, yeah, there is an Instagram account called Ken Robinson, so we can find out about him there. And this is a book I treasure, and uh, it's all written there because I usually talk to my books. We, we, I write, right, and I get, I make questions, and that, and sometimes disagree with my books. But <laughs> um, yeah, and this is called The Element. And says how finding your passion changes everything. <clears throat> and uh, here it says that uh, what is the element? And it says that the element <clears throat> is the meeting point between natural aptitude and personal passion. Uh, so it's do see. in other words, it's doing what you are good at, but doing it with passion. Uh -huh. And when you oh, when you when you do what what when you do what you like and you are good at because you've learned you've trained yourself or it's a natural gift, you feel that you are in your element, and when you are in your element, you flow. Mm. Things go 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 flowing nicely. Uh, let's let's say uh, in harmony right and uh, yeah it says here um when people are in their element they connect with something fundamental to their sense of identity purpose and well-being right. being there provides a sense of self-revelation of defining who they really are and what they are really meant to be doing with their lives Wow. So that is mm -hmm. it, it, that. That may answer the question that we all humans, I suppose, ask ourselves at some <laughs> point: What oh, am exactly. I doing here in this life? What is my mission in this life? So, being in your element probably helps you find your mission. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the yeah. suggestions, Graciela. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. And there is a question. Mm -hmm. I was right asking: Do you have any? favorite AI website for teaching? Oh, there are so many. There are so many. Uh, there is um, uh, for teachers who need to uh, who need to plan uh, magic lessons, magic classrooms, or uh, Tree is also a very good one, right? Well, ChatGPT, but you need to be, you need to learn how to give the, the proper prompts uh, uh, to, to the chat, right? Uh, there are quite a number, right? Um, I, for my pronunciation classes, there is one called Ego, E-I-G-O, uh, I like that because students um, can listen to, can watch a video, listen to the audio, then record themselves, and get they get uh, feedback on oh, their on, on their recording. So that uh, you you can help your students become autonomous when using that, mm -hmm. right? I but see. now out out of the top of my head, there's so many. Probably I'm forgetting. Quite a number, yeah. Quite a great. Number. Thank you, thank you very much, Graciela. Right. And so let me let me ask you another another question. Just a couple, yeah. not, not yeah. two two yeah, two sure. more questions. All right. So you know that in our life, sometimes we face difficulties, and sometimes we struggle to solve the problems. Uh -huh. You know the and and at that time we say, oh, I wish I could that superpower, uh -huh. so I can easily solve this problem or i wish i could this superpower so i could i could easily do or easily solve my problem so when you think about it into the for the for your classroom if you could have one what would it be and how would it help you hmm. a superpower well I think that we teachers already have a superpower and that is but we need to be very careful with that and I and, and I think that 
all along this conversation, uh, we've been uh -huh. dealing with that. I think that our superpower, and I read that in in, in a in a quote that I cannot remember by heart now, but it's something I always think of. We have we teachers when we get into a classroom, uh, we can set the atmosphere. We have the power to decide whether the atmosphere in the classroom is going to be an inviting an atmosphere or a threatening atmosphere. We have the power to make somebody feel comfortable, happy, or miserable. Uh -huh. We have the power to make somebody smile or cry. And that has to do with how we treat the other, what we say, what words we choose to say, right? Because, and this is something I always tell my trainee teachers, I'm the trainer and you are the trainees. And that's just a chronological situation. <laughs> it's because I was here before and I could take the courses before, right? But yeah, right. That, that, that doesn't give me any authority over you. I don't know if I can I actually see. say uh -huh. what I, I mean. See. Uh, so we're equals. And so I think that that's a superpower, right? Understand that you are there for a certain purpose, but you are not the owner of other people's lives or destinies. You know, there are, I, I've come up. I have come across some uh, teachers, perhaps teachers of mine in the past, who felt very happy if they could ruin your life with a heart, with a bad mark or with a ba bad grade. And no, I, I said, no, I don't want to be that kind of a teacher. So um, I think that our superpower is kindness. Uh you can even right. you can even bring around the most <coughs> reluctant reluctant student if you treat that student with kindness yeah mm -hmm. i see yeah. thank you thank, thank you very much yeah. graciela okay so think that's graciela we finished the interview and okay. you step outside your home and find a lot of tickets oh and the winning 10 million dollars what would you really? do but please really? be honest. Yeah, be <laughs> honest, please. <laughs> oh my. Well, <laughs> uh, first off, I would go out to celebrate, <laughs> right? probably. Um, yeah. Um, well, okay. I would. Uh, well, I would keep some for myself. I would probably buy. A, a plane ticket straight away to go and visit my daughter who is now uh, taking a, um, a master's course, oh. a master's, uh, pursuing her master's in the US and oh. I haven't seen, uh, she left last August and I haven't seen her since. So wow. that would be the first, I, I would just knock on her door and say, oh, look who's here, mommy's here. <laughs> that, that would be great. Uh, well, perhaps then uh, I might invite her to go around the world with me, but that's a lot of money, so I would have a lot more left. Um, hmm, it would be nice to give other teachers the possibility to meet other teachers, sort of an create a kind of, you know, students go on exchanges, but uh -huh. maybe teachers can also go. And I might go where you are and teach your own students. And at the same time, you might come here and teach my own students. And perhaps those, uh, that money could, uh, could fund that, could, could provide for, for the necessary funds there. <laughs> To wow, do it. great. Yeah, Wonderful. Know, right? Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> great yeah, ideas with money. that money. Okay, but thank you very much for being I, honest I, about I... keeping keeping <laughs> some for yourself. <laughs> some reward, right? Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. as soon as I finish, I'm going out to see if there isn't a lottery ticket there. I mean, <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> probably. Probably. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you can find. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Thank you very much. All right, okay. so, and now I'm going to ask you my last question. Are you ready for it? Mm, yeah, of course. Sure, yeah, okay. Of course. The most difficult one. Here is it. 
What is your motto? Yeah, hard one. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I really I really don't like those people who complicate things. So um, I don't know if it is my one motto because I may have uh, a motto, I may have more, but uh, I would say do not complicate things unnecessarily. Do not mm -hmm. make things complicated. Life will complicate them on its own, right? So go simple, uh -huh. live simply, yes? Live a simple life and, and yeah, if, if you can go the, the, the simple way, why would you go the difficult, the, the complicated one? I mean, there are difficult things, right? I, I'm not, I'm not avoiding the difficult situations, but if you have a difficult situation already, try to face it I mean, simply. Do not simply. complicate it even, uh -huh. even, do not complicate it even more, uh -huh. right? Uh, because things, com things complicate themselves. Definitely. Right? So, but, you know, uh -huh, you know, there are also lots of people as a teacher that make some easy things to make them more complicated. Uh -huh. There are. There are a lot there of are. people. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, In yeah. education also there are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, for example, these kind of teachers who get into the classroom and they say, today we're going to learn something really difficult. <laughs> what? What's that? Why are you already telling your students to be afraid of what you're going to teach? What's the point? Even if that is difficult, do not complicate it. Make it easy. Make right? it easy for uh, them. Uh, yeah, make it easy. Yes, okay, yes, thank yes. you. <laughs> thank you very much, Graciela. That's all my questions. Oh, I, uh, I, I, I ask all the questions to you. Before, okay. before, ending, before ending our live sessions, would you like to add anything else? Oh, I'm very happy. I, I had a, 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 a very nice time here and I've seen quite a number of people coming here. I want to invite those who are interested uh, to come and explore Teachers in Action. You're going to find some things in Spanish, obviously, because that's my mother tongue, but uh, there are lots of posts uh, in English. Uh, interesting ones you can write uh, to me privately a uh, DM right uh, my whatsapp is also there um, if you'd like uh, me to talk about something in particular mm -hmm. I'm always available and uh, well I had a great oh. time I hope people <laughs> people can benefit Thanks. for at least something like this that I have uh -huh. said right Wonderful. Yeah, at least Thank a little you. bit yeah <laughs> yes Thank Great, you. thank you, thank, thank you very much, Graciela. And, and congrats, mm -hmm. congrats, Vulcan, and this uh, on this series of sessions because you're bringing people from all over the world. I've seen some very dear colleagues of mine from Argentina there, well, also Tom, right, Tom Kittle, and um, uh, this is also you. You were talking about a professional development, and this is also. A very good contribution to professional <laughs> development. Yes, thank you. yes, it thank, is. Thank you very much. Yes, it it's, I'm happy okay. to hear it, Graciela. Yeah. Okay, so okay. I, I will. <laughs> I would like to say one more time. Thank you very much being with thank us, you. and thank you very much for your suggestions, advice, and the things that you share with us. And especially the most important thing is, like uh, your time. You spend your time with us. That's really important. Thank you. And Graciela Maria Martinez was with us tonight. We had a fruitful session with her. We talked a lot of things. You can watch it later in our Instagram page, Creative English 18. And we are going to be here, as you know, every Monday at 9 p.m. You know it. Uh, so it took us time, of course. So until the next time, wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And until mm -hmm. the next time, Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, Graciela. And bye, bye everybody. Bye. And Thank peace. My pleasure. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, everybody.